that I really want you to watch tonight is our tournament leader, Parker Bone. Now, the reason I believe that the push away is so important is because it sets both the tempo and the timing for the rest of the approach. If we do it wrong, chances are the rest of the approach is going to be wrong and the shot is not going to be good. Now, let's look at how we do the, the push away specifically. Imagine that you're right-handed, and of course, if you're left-handed, like Parker is, just turn everything around, and you're a four-step player. What we want to be thinking at this point in time here is the hand and heel, right hand, right heel for right-handers, left hand, left heel for left-handers, goes right together at the same time. Now, the reason that this is so important is because if I'm starting here and I step and then push, the timing will be late. And if I do the exact opposite, if I push and then step, the timing will be early and the release and everything won't be proper at the end. So really what we need to be thinking is hand and heel together. Now quickly, if you're a five step player here, what you wanna be thinking is you take the first step with the opposite foot, the left foot, and you don't move the ball. Now it's hand and heel together again at the same time. Now if you notice, I pushed it out here just about as far as I stepped. And at this point, my right hand is still nice and relaxed in the ball. The weight's in my left hand, and all I do right now here is let go with the left hand, and the ball goes right into the pendulum swing. So that's it. That's the proper way to do the push away. Keep in mind that if you want to get it perfect and get it right, it's hand and heel together. Next week, we're going to Louisville, Kentucky for the Ebonite Kentucky Classic, 9 o'clock Eastern time. And of course, we'll have another average builder. And here's what our first match went like. Brian Goble really in command throughout the entire game. Throwing shots just like that led him to a 257 to 236 victory over Mike Albee. We see his reaction right there, and there's the final score. We'll be back with our next match. Goble taking on Dennis Jakes right after these very important messages don't go away. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the power roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless power roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. When the bear comes out of hibernation, what? motor skills are awkward. He is bad-tempered. He hears little, sees less. But his sense of smell remains keen. The bear sniffs. The refreshing scent of coast revives him. Massive lather engulfs him. After which he becomes friendly and playful and can learn to do tricks. Coast, the eye-opener. First, we gave you Jock Rock. Y'all ready for this? Now, ESPN and Tommy Boy present Jock Jams. The hottest crowd pumping sports jams of all time. Pump up the jam, pump it up. Why your feet are thumping? Yeah. Jock Jams, available at record stores everywhere. Yeah. We've had uh, some thunderstorms down here in Texas. That's no surprise in it. And for those of you that uh, missed our opening match, we do apologize to you. Brian Goble defeated Mike Albee 257 to 236, and he's moving on now to take on Dennis Jakes. Well, he left one of those in the opening match, but uh, that was about all he left. <laughs> well, that left lane has been the only lane that's really caused him any problems at all. He's the right-hand lane, which he's going to finish on, which kind of surprises me because Dennis Jakes has the option of picking the lane that he wants to start on, and he's giving Brian Goble the opportunity to finish on his strong lane. Yeah, but, but Dennis kind of hooks the ball a little bit more. He may want to finish on the lane that hooks more. That's a very good possibility, but uh, I watched him in practice, and he never hit that left lane very well. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. So I, I think it's more uh, more of a, a comfort uh, zone for him to be able to finish the match first. And that's what you do if you start on the right-hand lane. You'll finish the match first. I tell you, Jake's, Jason Couch, and, of course, Parker Bowen, the tournament leader, are 
all pretty happy that uh, Mike Albee's not out there anymore. I'll bet you. Well, it's no bargain taking on Brian Goble, but Dennis Jakes, who hasn't won a game on television since 1985, he's 0-8 and anxious to end that string <laughs> right now. Ten years without a victory. Well, he's been uh, recently married, so maybe that'll change his luck. Well, his wife is right here, Rosemary, I think is her name. They met earlier this year. Well, you can't throw two shots much better than that. That's right. He's one of the biggest, strongest guys out here. He looks like he should be playing linebacker for some pro football team. But uh, Dennis Jake's always one of those smooth guys. Like a lot of big guys, he has that very smooth footwork, you know, like, like a, Billy Way Way like a ballerina have, going yeah. to the foul line. Yeah, he's 6'3", 230. Uh, so, but they're not arm wrestling out there. No, they're not. But uh, strength is a factor nowadays, I believe, in the game of bowling. Much more so than it was. Look at this, solid eight. Well, he starts off 10 and an 8, and they, uh, well, they at least they weren't one. together. Yeah, right, <laughs> or in between strikes, yeah. So, Brian, who has to regroup now. Goble won um, just a couple weeks ago, last week, excuse me, and uh, he won from second spot then. And now he's got a little more work to do to come all the way from fifth. Tell me, do you think that uh, mentally he would be relaxing a little bit because he got maybe the PBA player of the year or out of the way and now Dennis Jakes who hasn't won a game on TV in 10 years? I think so. I, I, and no, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Brian Goble felt that he, he just accomplished a major step forward in this tournament by eliminating Mike Albee. And I'm sure the rest of the players feel the same way. Albee's gone. Uh, we're glad he's gone, even though Brian Goble's the hottest player on the tour right now. I'd rather bowl Brian Goble than Mike Albee. And a little tickle of the seven. It falls over late, but it gets him on the strike pattern. We're going to take another look at that shot. And Brian Goble, you see the look on his face. He's a pretty happy young man. You can see the ball going into that heavy roll right there. Watch the head pin go to the wall, comes back, kicks out the four and the seven. Well, that head pin did a yeoman's job there. Yeah. Kind of looked familiar. I remember you doing that all the time. I had to, to average 180. <laughs> Here's that big, strong release again. Wow, did he knock that 10 pin out of there? Shows you how big he is. He gets, he blocks out the whole camera. He can't see the pins when Dennis is running them out out there. Well, he has a, an intense look on his face right now. I like to see what his heart rate is right now. Mm. I'll tell you what, he is into it. He's into it, and uh, he's always been one of those kind of guys that could watch his wrist. See how the cup position of that wrist that stays that way all the way through the swing. That takes a lot of strength. Well, he snapped on it at the end. Oh, what a result. He says, man, I couldn't have asked him for a better start than this. Well, eight strikes away from $50,000. Don't even talk yet. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still got his hands full of this match. This Brian Goble is not going to back off from anybody, and he's still got a possibility of 279 himself. So. And, Brian, the only time he has missed this lane was the last time he left a solid eight. Needs to double up here, though. Good release there. He looked at it, though. Is it going to be another solid eight? No. Well, in a one-game match, when it doesn't matter what your score is, as long as it's better than the other players, a solid eight, something like that, can really demoralize you. And there's Jerry Ray, who uh, has been battling some health problems and told me he's just grateful to be here. And he's the guy that's putting up that $50,000 proprietor here at Highland Lakes. Well, the players love this guy, I'll guarantee you. That's a lot of money for a pro, pro bowler to take a shot at. Goble, though, is so relaxed, so confident, he just puts it right back on Jake's. Kind of a, a psychological warfare here. Who's going to wilt first here with the strikes? That's right. The guy keeping score for you and I up here, Philip Rigoner, doing the stats for us again this week. He's on a few strikes of his own. That's right. He must be getting paid awful good to be doing the stat, stat work because he's not bowling that good anymore. See? <laughs> five, five, seven to go. Jake's kind of throttling it down emotionally a little bit. We're going to take a look at Dennis Jake's shot here. You pick it up right from the back here. Watch this arm swing. See the cupped wrist, the strength that he uses? Really, as you said, snaps that hand through the ball, Mike. Tremendous rotation on the ball. I would say 19, 20 revolutions on that ball. I can't Easily. count that high. I mean, it's just... <laughs> 
You used to get that many, but that was going down and coming back. Mike. It was on the ball return, yes. Right. Yeah. Trying for one more. Gave it a lot of room this time. Got it back for the solid eight. Something bothered him, evidently. He's got that look on his face. Somebody must have moved or talked or something while he lost his concentration there. He couldn't have put it in there any better, but, you know, the important thing is it's solid eight for Brian Goble, now a solid eight for Dennis Jakes. Well, the important thing is he's got to make this spare. Don't get careless or angry and miss an easy spare. Well, he kind of shakes his head right now. Here's what happened in his approach right here. As he's about ready to let it go, he hears something, stands straight up, and looks over with a look of disgust. But don't you get disgusted. You stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Just when you thought you knew your way around the game, Columbia 300 introduces a finer point. Barracuda. Cuda C with Ceramicore from Columbia 300. Experience the power from within. Columbia holds the world over. An important study was presented at a national sports medicine conference. It shows that for the sore muscles occurring the day after a strenuous workout, Advil provides superior relief to extra strength Tylenol. It's strong and fast. If you exercise regularly, you should know that more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever for all types of muscle aches. For next day soreness, Advil just works better than Tylenol. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. So guys, what's the best movie about caddies? Caddyshack. Most dramatic lighting in a movie about caddies? Caddyshack. Best performance by a gopher? Caddyshack. Best editing? Caddyshack. What's the worst movie about caddies? Oh, Caddyshack too. Oh, shake that! <laughs> yes. That lovely young lady is Rosemary Jakes. And earlier I had a chance to talk to Dennis about his new bride, and this is what he had to say. I met Rosemary in Hartford, Connecticut this year on the winter tour, and everything has worked out. I couldn't ask for a better person. She's supportive in my career, I'm supportive in hers, and it just happened that yesterday was her birthday, and I guess this was her birthday present of making the telecast. Well, she's got a lovely smile right now. We'll see if it continues if Brian Goble keeps striking. Brian Goble were to strike twice more, we'd have a tie match right now. It just seems whether it's a matter of carry. He's hitting the pocket extremely well. Just a little early move on the lane and left that four pin. I see the extreme lane. difference in how they're playing the lanes. It's, it's uh, something for the people at home to, to pay attention to because this guy right here, we've mentioned several times, he's the hottest player on the tour. He's been the most successful uh, recently, and the reason is because of his entry angle. We've talked about that, the heavy end-over-end -end roll. And then you have a Dennis Jakes who has struggled uh, to be successful out here for uh, quite a while. As you mentioned, 0-8 in his last uh, eight TV appearances. They get the big hook. Uh, the new bowling balls, the resin reactive bowling balls, you don't have to hook them a lot. They'll hit for you. So a lot of the players backing off. I was talking to Wayne Webb. Wayne Webb told me that he has to learn to back off on the rotation in order to keep the ball in the pocket area and to strike more. And he's learning to do that. And you can see he finished a little higher in the standings this week. Uh, Hall of Famer learning to retool his game, you might say. Well, you know, we saw that as Goble gets another strike on lane 19. We saw that with Norm Duke. Uh, a couple of weeks ago where he changed releases in the middle of the game and went for the big hook to the straighter shot and uh, wound up pulling out a victory. So, well, no, I guess he lost that game. That was against John Handigar. But nevertheless, it was a bold move that uh, he did that particular time. you got to have a little bit of that riverboat gambler in you to be successful out here because, like I mentioned earlier, it's a one-game match and there's no second chances. You either do it now or you don't do it at all. Boy, he almost left another solid eight. He's pointing a finger at it as Rosemary says, Good. Dennis, who is uh, perspiring a bit out there. And here we see the difference, 21 pins. He's looking at it. The eight pin almost stood, and he says, not again, not you. He might go down there and just bite that thing in half. <laughs> break it in half, I'll tell you. Tremendous rotation here. Look at that ball come back. <laughs> Look at that 10 pin. That ball almost rolled out. It looked like it still knocked that 10 pin right out. Well, Brian Goble, uh, Definitely got his hands full. 
Dennis Jenks, if without the solid eight, would have our the first eight, and we'd be really getting excited about now. Goble can't afford any more four pins or ten pins or eight pins. He needs strikes. Well, you got one. Be sure and join us uh, from Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, Indiana for the NASCAR Brickyard 400 Pole Qualifying. That's uh, Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. That's high noon on the coast. Big shot here, ninth frame's got to have it. A little more ball speed there. Looks like he moved out a little bit, Mike, and went a little more directly to the pocket with more ball speed, and it worked for him. That's the last shot he has to throw on this lane, uh, on that lane in this match. So and Now, Earl, does he change his hand release some, too, when he does that, or does he Here's just... another look at it, and we'll take a look at it here, Mike, and here's that last shot we just saw. He's a little more direct here. You can see he's a little bit more to the right. Look at the ball speed now. He's not arcing the ball. He's going down and in. So I don't think he changed his hand position so much as the ball speed. Jake's trying for one more. Uh oh Through the nose, leaves just the 6'10". Anybody's match now, Mike. Anybody's match. Not an easy spare in this situation here. Can Jake shut him out or not? No, he cannot shut him out. Ooh. Important to make the spare. He's switching bowling balls, cross lane. Wants to get both balls with, both pins with the ball, which he did. Good cover. Well, for a guy that hasn't won a game on television oh, in the last 10 years, 0 and 8, pressure pack so situation hit here in the 10th frame. Talking to himself, he's wearing a microphone. It's interesting to hear what the players have to say in this situation. He's kind of disappointed in himself for making that shot. He knows he has to strike out to put pressure on Goble. First one is a big one right here. Pretty shot. He can take right. this out the sheet. One more. To make 257, as he says, all right, one more, make oh, him double. God, your highest game ever on TV, you're going to lose. <laughs> Real positive, isn't he? <laughs> one yeah. time. One time. One time only. Come on, come on. Yes. Oh, yes, he says. All right. Well, the pin count is very important. 257 possibility right. Brian Goble can strike out for 258, Anything so he must fill. Happen. Here's another look at that. This Anything one does roll out, Mike. Happen. Watch the ball, the big arc. He's almost out near the channel. Watch the ball straighten out right there. That kept it from going through the middle of the head pin. Boy, another half a revolution. It was six. And there's his reaction. Yeah, he didn't think that was going to strike. No, he didn't. But he, this is a big strike here. He's worked this hard. Oh, he needs come on, this come on, come on. Oh, all right. Well, 256. Well, that's the best I can do. And he said it all right there. Nine strikes. Says that's the best I can do, and Rosemary got a big kiss. Oh, really? <laughs> well, Brian Goble, the picture of confidence, needs two strikes and nine. Has to have this one. He's been here many times before, and he's been successful most of the time. You can't throw it any better, Earl. Did you see that follow through again? Well, that's the that's the thing about his game that he's improved so much over the last couple of years. He's become so much more consistent in his point of release. The ball comes off his hand almost the same every time with the same consistent ball speed. And if you have the same release, same ball speed, it's going to end up in the same place. Theoretically, that's true. Flush 10, it looked like it just set a little early. And there's Dennis Jakes giving thanks to the heavens above. Jakes oh, is gonna God. win this match. He's gonna go on to face Jason Couch. And I think he got a couple of guys over here to the side are mighty glad that Brian Goble <laughs> and the guys that left after he did. <laughs> wow, Brian, Brian Goble takes home $5,000. He's finishing fourth. Rose Marie is very happy right now. You be sure to stay tuned for the next match, which will feature this man. He'll be taking on Jason Couch right after this. Tim Christ, he lost in the last game. And in the seventh position, the guy was on the telecast last week, Ricky Ward. 
And in the eighth place uh, this week, Norm Duke, who's got it back together again after a kind of a shaky winter tour. And in ninth, Ed Rich Richardson, still looking for that first win, but he's coming on. Yeah, bowling well in his home state. Tenth place, Dave D'Entremont. He's from Middleburg Heights, Ohio, an Indians fan. And in 11th, Dave Watka. He's from Vegas. And, of course, everybody knows this guy, Hall of Famer Wayne Webb. He's had a good week this week. He's getting back in shape. And Bob Belmont, who led a couple weeks ago, feels he can be successful. He's going full-time. In 14th place, another good left-hander, Mike Scroggins. And the quiet man, Dave Arnold. He was in 15th place. Jess Dayrook having the best year of his career. He's won twice already this year. And then Butch Soper in 17th. Finished second in two of the last Columbia 300 Opens. 18th place, a new face out there. Got to look for Jeff Morin. And in 19th place, Kirk Von Kruger. In 20th, Tommy DeLutz looking for his first TV appearance. And of course, Roger Bowker. He loves these Columbia tournaments. He's won this title in 1992. 22nd place, Mike Christensen from Pensacola, Florida. And a good young player, Lenny Blakely from Tacoma, Washington. And, of course, Bob Bespy, the guy with all the revolutions, and the Ron Williams, who got sick this week and had to drop out and let the alternate in. And in our next match, we've got Dennis Jakes, red hot. He's taking on a very fine young left-hander, Jason Couch. We'll be back with that match right after this. Other problems here in Texas. We do want to apologize for technical difficulties. If you missed that opening match, it was a good one. Brian Goble defeated uh, Mike Albee 257 to 236. He then moved on in the second match to take on Dennis Jakes, but he didn't prevail. Dennis Jakes won 256 to 246. Everybody's bowling great right here tonight. These are some of the uh, youth bowlers that participated in the Pro-Am, uh, seeing themselves on television, and uh, they're happy about it. So far for our opening four games, they're over players are averaging a whopping 249. That's that's just incredible because uh, uh, when you get out here in front of these ca television cameras and uh, this huge audience here at Highland Lanes, uh, there's a lot of pressure out there. The guys are feeling that. You know they're feeling it. Dennis Jakes is perspiring very heavily, not just from the heat either. God. Yeah, but he has a great ball reaction and he's throwing it well right now too, I'll tell you what. This is our first look at this young man here, Jason Couch, who was, I believe, the 1992 Rookie of the Year. Is that correct? That's correct. Watch this arm swing, folks. Gets it up real high, opens those shoulders up, gets a lot of rotation. Oh. Hit up then and watch him spin, huh? Especially with reactive resin, huh? You bet. I like his release, though. He's got, he's got, that, he's got a lot of confidence, that real fluid, loose arm swing. Now, you can't swing the ball like that, and you see his reaction. You can't swing the ball that loose unless you're very confident. You believe in yourself. Well, that's an inter interesting observation. What makes you say that? Well, just because you create tension. If you create tension in the shoulder muscles, you can't swing the ball that freely. Oh, okay. I guess that's why I always have such a short backswing. As he crosses it in there for a solid double. <laughs> Uh, well, after that little bit of levity from Mr. Durbin, I just uh, I feel I should pass on a little bit of sad news that's happened recently. Last Friday, uh, Frank Baker passed away. He was the executive director of the American Bowling Congress from the years 1951 through 1972, the FIQ president for six years, and, of course, a great supporter of the PBA. He says, ooh, he got a little surprised on that. Time to move, you heard him say. Hooked so he thinks that that was definitely the lane and not himself. Hooked he says a little it hooked early. a little early. Yeah. Yeah. Right we'll lane, find it tighter. Well, well, just what you uh, have already told all the viewers at home. Got to make the spare now. Not an easy spare. Three, six, ten. Well, that's kind of a mistake going that cost you a match when there's this many strikes okay. being thrown. But missing a spare can be a okay. key, key thing in the okay. match, okay. even though it's early. He hasn't won a game on television in 10 years, 0-8 wins. Does that emotionally drain you for the next match? Well, you know, he kind of gave up on that last match. He said, you're going to shoot your highest game ever on television, and you're going to lose. That's what he said. We all heard him say that. So that's kind of a defeatist attitude, don't you think? That's not Dennis Jakes. He's always been an aggressive go get him type player. Oh, my, look at that. Boy, that pin, the ball almost hit it going through, and then the pin I behind it seemed like I guess this lane just like doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
All right, now just keep making your spares, Dennis. Don't, uh, don't Boy, be careless. No time at all as he goes for that eight pin. I saw him whiff a two pin last night. Ah. Jason Couch, look of determination on his face. Well, he's just a young guy, and he's uh, he's got a lot on the line here, a chance to win, and he wants it very badly. And he is the baby of the telecast. He's the youngest player on the telecast. What is he, 26? 25. Come on. Come on, Jason! Hold up! Yeah! You know, Jason has a uh, sponsor that's uh, not well right now, and he has uh, some words for him. This is what he had to say. Yeah, I sure would, Mike. Uh, Billy, this one's for you tonight, buddy. I hope you're feeling a little better, and I can't wait to get home and see you again, so this tournament's for you. Obviously, Billy is a financial sponsor and emotional sponsor of Jason Couch. And, uh, sounds like he's a very close friend, too. Right, it sounds like uh, you know when you dedicate it to somebody else, maybe that gets you out of yourself a little bit as he leaves the six pin. I think he's kind of happy with the result there. He thought that ball was hooking a little harder than he wanted it to. It might have been a 6-8. The ball really finished strong. Easy spare here for Jason. He'll go cross lane using his strike ball. He knows he wants to hook it into the spare. And the six pin has it. Well, Dennis Jakes has to get himself back on track now to get himself back in the match here. So what kind of adjustment will he make on this right lane? It's a good quest. Good question, Michael. You're the right-hander. You tell me. What's he going to do here? I think he's going to probably move at least a couple of boards and one with his target. Two with the feet and one with the target. That's hooking earlier. He might, like that, try to loft That's it a little better. Oh. Just tried, a, I think he just tried to right. loft it a little more. That's get it closer. He said it was hooking early, remember? And by hooking early, he feels that the oil has moved out of the first 15 feet of the lane or the head get area. The back up. So he needs, get, to, he get needs to get the ball up. through that faster. So you throw it over it. That's one way to do it. Uh, if you move in deeper, sometimes the ball overreacts for you. So he might want it to stay in that one place. And the four pin has it, but a look of concern on Rosemarie's face, and rightly so, as he trails in this match by 32 pins. Frame. Is that a little rumble and thunder out there that I hear? Um, lots of rumbles and thunder lo out lots there. Lots of rumbles and thunder here, folks, in Texas. Uh, we're trying to stay on the air. Another four pin. Uh, oh, boy. The lanes are just hooking a lot more than they were as he, when he started his last game. As he, went, as he got later and later into that match, remember how his ball was starting to hook more and more? In fact, in the 10th frame, he came up a little high on a hit. He thought might not strike. He's going to have to make some adjustments here somehow, and I don't know what exactly he's going to do, but that might be the end of him right there. Hard ball, lost it. Hard ball, lost it. Well, one good game and one bad game. <laughs> he's given up already. That's kind of strange. Here's another look at that shot. You can see the ball never does grip the lane. He's waving at it goodbye. Well, you know, uh, I don't know if you study psychology or anything at all, but a lot of people are into self-talk nowadays. What do you say to yourself? <laughs> what he's saying to himself is poison. <laughs> Jason, Jason, though, is talking real sweet to himself right now. Yeah, well, he's pumped, and he's very aggressive, and uh, he's got a lot of things uh, emotionally going for him right now, as you mentioned. Uh, sometimes when you are doing this in your mind for someone else, it, it makes a better player out of you. It really does, because uh, you don't feel the same amount of pressure. You feel like this is something that you're doing for someone else, and you're doing it because you care enough about them to, to give it your best effort. You know, it'd be interesting, too, if Jason would go on and win this match. We have roommates bowling for the title. Mm. Very good friends, too. Jason and Parker are very good friends. Ooh, well, didn't exactly destroy that five pin, but he got it out of there. Jason nope. Couch running away with this match. He's leading in here by 54 pins, and we get a look at him tilting the five to take that 54 pin lead. We'll have the completion of match number three when we come back after these important messages. 
An important study was presented at a national sports medicine conference. It shows that for the sore muscles occurring the day after a strenuous workout, Advil provides superior relief to... Dennis Jenks, uh, quite a bit behind. If he has any chance, he has to strike this match out. He still could get 225. He took it all the way out. <laughs> Something happened there. Oh... Uh. <laughs> Oh, even when I'm losing, they're dropping stuff. <laughs> Somebody oh, dropped God. something in the middle of his approach. <laughs> well, he needed something to loosen him up, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's not nearly as intense as he was in his match against Brian Goble. You know, we had four 300 games bowled throughout the tournament this week. Uh, PBA is averaging eight a, eight a week on the tour this year. Is that all? That's a lot. By comparison, last year they averaged six a week as he finally puts uh, two shots back together. Back right. to back. Uh. Jason Couch. Not concerned with Dennis Jenks right now, only concerned with what he's doing. Well, there's no defense in this game. It's all offense. You have to go out there and get the job done, and nobody can help you. You have to do it all by yourself. If, the, if there was defense in this game, if, the, if Dennis Jenks could get up there and stop him, he could hurt somebody <laughs> bad. Yeah, that's true. He could, could do. Trying for one more. Boy, I'll tell you what, he looks ready. I think Parker Bowen's going to have his hands full with this young man. Well, they had a great position round match last night. Would they tie at 258 apiece? And because Parker was ahead by 15 pins going in, he was the tournament leader, but it was a great match. Jason getting dry in that hand. Eighth frame, leading by over 50 pins. Trying to put him away for sure. Oh, man, he is wired. Well, it's not over, but it's just about that situation. Even if he opened in the ninth and the tenth, he would be in the 220s. Dennis Jake's a possible 225 if he strikes out all the way. So uh, mathematically, he's still in the match, but not likely. Dennis Jake's for three in a row. Well, that ought to do it right there, Michael. Okay. He says, okay. Let's see if I can make this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he doesn't, uh, doesn't miss it on the right. He might miss it on the left, but he won't miss it on the right. <laughs> well, 65 pins. That's uh, rather comfortable. Dennis Jakes, though. Broke his uh, string of 0 for 8. <laughs> I don't just don't want to start a new one. Leaves the 7 pin in the ninth frame. Okay. Okay, he says. He's, uh, he's pretty happy with things right now. He's, uh, it's been a while since he's made a telecast, so it's just got to make him feel pretty good, and, and Rosemary has to be kind of proud of him. Yeah, the city of Austin, one of the nicest towns you'll ever meet or ever be in for a city this size. You know, 465,000 people, but it's like a small, small Texas town. Even though it's a capital, the atmosphere is really friendly here. It's a really nice town. I like it. Got a lot of nice golf courses, too. They do have some nice golf courses. They got a, nice, a lot of nice bowling centers, too. That's right. Stephen Fuller Austin was the guy that founded the little town of Austin, Texas, way back in 1836. Built it on his father's land. How about that? Got it started here with some settlers on some land his father owned. Were you around him? You're about the right age to be around back then. Yeah, right. I can remember it well. Yes. Jason just finishing it out, trying to maintain his uh, stroke and rhythm and tempo so he can get ready for his roommate. Probably got his roommate pretty nervous right now. Well, Parker's assured me that he's going to uh, break his string of, of 11 straight losses in telecast. This is the 12th time here. Really? Yeah, he hasn't won uh, on television in his last 11 telecasts. Hmm. He's won when they weren't on television, but uh, last 11 telecasts, no victories. Well, 250-something seems to be the number today. So Parker better be uh, gearing 250 in his mind that that's what he needs uh, to win. Jason Couch looks uh, 
It's just going to be a matter of how, whether he can carry as well in the second game as he has in this game. You know, it's kind of another observation is the PBA lane men are probably as knowledgeable as any lane men in the world, or maybe more so. Len Nicholson and Steve Cross are the guys that do the lanes, and they set up a shot out there that makes it fairly equal for lefties and righties. And uh, it's amazing how they can do that week after week and, and create this kind of scoring condition and make everybody pretty happy with what's going on. 256 seems to be a popular winning score tonight. Well, fun was, well, it lasted. <laughs> Dennis, one of the nice guys on the tour. As big and strong as he is, he's just really a good guy and uh, very popular out here. You know, we are appreciative that uh, Dennis Jakes is kind enough to wear a microphone yeah. for us, and uh, he's kept us entertained anyway as we've moved along by some Just of his comments. Fun. Just have fun. Finishes it out with 192, and uh, before we go to commercial, we're going to take a look at the Dick Weber AMF point standings. And who's the guy naturally on top? Walter Ray. Well, Mike Albee's giving him a good push. Dave Giantremont's right behind Albee, so it's a good race. And, of course, Norm Duke, uh, the current player of the year, is in fourth place. Mark Williams, we've seen him a number of times on the telecast so far this summer. And the left-hander, Jess Stayrook. So we've got a lot of lefties in contention. Well, that, that's a familiar name there, Brian Goble. He's creeping up there. And Butch Soper, the old man. Yeah, and Butch is there very happy place. because he's looking forward to some of these events. Parker Bone the third, of course, our tournament leader. Amleto Monticelli back in action. And another fine left-hander, Eric Fogel. And a very steady player still looking to win, though. Don Mosier in 12th place. David Ozio, one of the really premier stylists on the tour. And Dave Arnold making a run for it. Uh, Benoit, the first guy to bowl 300 from the championship match on television. Dave Traber, he can go straight. Oh, yeah, but Joe Furpo is just the opposite. He can hook it anywhere. And, of course, Bob Spaulding bowled one of the 300s here this week. And he was second at the Tournament of Champions this year. Bob Warren, another guy who can hook it all over the lane. Dave Ferraro, we haven't seen him this summer. Johnny Mazza, one of the premier lefties on the tour. And Danny Weissman has really been bowling well. He's won one already this year. And Billy Oaks, he's a, a Texan. And... Doug Kent, a very fine young player who won the Masters a few years ago. Right. John Mazza, by the way, is the defending champion, so he's locked into the uh, tournament. That's our uh, AMF point standings. We'll be back. Take a look at uh, Championship Frame, a review of our first three matches. Earl and I'll have that for you right after this. This, I believe, was just it was a strike somewhere around the ninth frame. Well, he just threw so many strikes. What difference does it make? Ryan Goble, 10th frame, led by 32 pins, just kind of finishing out the match. Uh, this guy has just been really, really dominant in the last few weeks. Well, he threw a lot of them like that in two matches, but uh, not enough to keep him going. But in that opening match, 257, 236, excellent opening match. All people well, but not well enough in the second match. He moved on to finish Dennis Jakes. Jakes is up in the 10th frame. Well, this was a key shot for Dennis. He only led by nine pins going into the shot. Watch where the ball ends up on the head pin. And he's not at that all sure he's going to carry this. You can see he had the four, the seven, and the 10. Briefly, Mike, got the head pin to come off the wall, kick out the four, seven. And Dennis's reaction is, oh, yeah, finally won one after going 0 and 8. And again, there's that number, 256 to 246. A lot of strikes, high scores. Now Jake's moved on. Take on Jason Couch. The big free arm swing, eight frame. He leading by 55 pins, working on a whole bunch of strikes. And this is how you get it done. Look at the big back up at the foul line and rotate that ball like you're turning a doorknob and 10 in the pit. Well, his reaction to that, very confident young man taking on his roommate next. There's that one more 256. We just keep having 250s, 256, 192. Well, the championship match is going to pit Parker Bone the third, taking on Jason Couch. We'll find out the result of that right after this. You know, Linda's been my barber. Stylist. No, stylist. We can see the Columbia 300 Open champion. What a beautiful trophy. 
Of course, Earl has lots of those in his den at home. One of these two guys is going to take it home. Yeah, well, this should be a great match. Two of the fine left-handers on the tour. Parker Bone, a very experienced player, been around a long time. He's 10-time champion, going against a young, very young, uh, former Rookie of the Year for the title. And as you mentioned, they're roommates. So there's going to be some emotion involved, no matter who wins. Well, if it's anything like the position round last night, we could have extra uh, extra overtime here. We could have that 300-300 uh, tie thing. That would be exciting. What did they give fifty thousand to each player? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> wow. Well, that's we're in fantasy land now. Well, so fifty thousand dollars. Remember for a three hundred game on television today from Highland Lanes. Well, tit for tat right there. Two opening strikes. This is going to come down to who's ever uh, carrying. I mean, you know, the tap here or there is going to really do you in. Jason wants to get off to that early lead, put the pressure on the older Parker Bone the third. It's tough when you're in your early 30s and you're talking about how old you are. Well, Def Parker's first victory was the Columbia 300 Open in Seattle. Mm. Well, the defending champion here is Brian Voss, and he had a bad week finishing 83rd. Walter Ray Williams Jr., who has won the Columbia Open in the past, didn't bowl this week. He's out there defending his world championship in horseshoes. 19,000 on top. 10 goes to the loser of this match, so a $9,000 game. We already see that uh, Jake's took home 6,000, and uh, Goble 5, and all before. Parker can't let him get out ahead too much. Gotta answer everything. Oh, and this uh, the ten pin rather. I'm thinking like a right hander here stands. Well, Parker will use uh, like all good spare shooters, and Parker's one of the best. He'll throw the ball very hard at this. Go cross lane, use as much of the lane as he can. You see him standing clear over by the ball return. Got the concentration in his eyes. Cross the lane. And Parker, uh, as we mentioned, he's 32 years old. He's 5'11". Uh, he's married to lovely Mary back home in New Jersey with two sons, Parker Bone the fourth and Evan. I wonder why I didn't call him Parker Bone the fifth. What do you think? That's for the next generation. I know. I'm just, I was seeing if you're paying attention there, Mike. Oh, good. I'm glad I passed the test. <laughs> Well, trouble is, when you go strike, spare, strike, the other guy can be uh, 30 pins in front of you before you can blink. And as we speak of the next generation, there's the next generation of bowlers, something that all bowling proprietors throughout the country are trying to cultivate. Mm -hmm. And they had a great time this week. Jason Couch, big free arm swing, big rotation. Big strike. Big strike. Ten in the pit, and he's pumped. I think, I used to room with a guy named Gary Mage, and Gary was one of my best friends when I bowled on the tour, and I think when you bowl your roommate, you're more relaxed. You, you just feel, you feel like uh, no matter who wins, it's a good thing. You know, one of you is going to win the match, and it's a good thing. And I think when you're more relaxed, you, you tend to make better shots. So we could have a, a very high-scoring match here. Our high game so far has been, I believe, 257 or 8. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if both these players beat that this game. Well, Parker's going to have to start striking on the right lane to do that. Jason took a re-rack on lane 19, see if it pays off, and it doesn't. As I mentioned before, you know, the, my roommate most of the time was my wife, so I never bowled her for a title. But she always got the check. <laughs> she always got the check. You got the trophy, she got the check. I see. <laughs> well, that keeps Parker in the match. Leaves that six pin, cross lane at it. Remember, it took a 225 average just to get into the top 24 for match play this week. What's amazing to me is, is there's three guys that can break the average record this year so far of over 222. I mean, that's some serious bowling for a lot of games. You know, these guys will bowl over 1,000 games in a year. I remember when Mark Ross set the record uh, several years ago, somewhere around 220 or 221 or whatever it was. We always thought that was phenomenal. 
Yeah. Well, that was back with plastic balls, too. Right. That was back around 78, 79 that he set that. It was phenomenal at that time as Parker gets a double and gets himself trailing by only nine pins and can put himself right in contention here with one more. Just the title match. The championship. Big shot there by Parker. He needs to follow it up, though. By I think this is one of the purest arm swings in bowling right here. Parker Bone, four-step approach. Watch how free and easy this swing goes out. The good long push away. Nice relaxed swing. Great follow through. Woo! Has those pins dancing. Has them dancing right there. And of course, Jason, we see Parker's reaction. You think the loser of this match is going to lock the other guy out of the room tonight? No, the loser probably has to sleep on the floor or something like that. Jason wanting to get back into the strike mode. And does. You know, he uh, has a new addition coming. <laughs> we talked to him about his new expectation here. Yeah, there's a little more pressure on me this week. You know, I got a, an extra mouth to feed here in uh, about five or six months. So I better get prepared here and start winning a little more often. Well, he's got bowling for the baby, bowling for the sponsor. I mean, really lit up his face there, didn't it, it when he started yeah. talking about the baby? Wait, wait, his face lights up when the baby's here. Mm -hmm. Well, right now he's thinking about one thing, throwing strikes. Ooh, got away with one there. Briefly, the four, six, seven. So what happened? I don't know what happened. Let's go ask Jason. <laughs> we'll take another look at it, but uh, this ball just must have gotten away from him a little bit and made a mistake somewhere. I don't see anything in the swing. He looks in good position. Balance looks good. Just hooked a little more than he expected, possibly. Okay, four, seven. Hard and straight at the two pins. Has him. But Parker Bow now leading by one. And he can uh, move further ahead right here. Parker remembers experienced a lot of trouble uh, on television lately. It's been a long time since he's been successful. Right. So I wonder if he's feeling any of that. I'm sure he is. You see the look in his eye, the concentration level. Good rotation. Oh, and a perfect shot. You know, he's had tremendous success from the number one position, winning seven of his eight singles matches. We ask him, how come? Here's what he had to say. Well, I would look at it to where if I'm top seed, if I can go out and post a real good score, then whoever my opponent is has to come and chase me. Obviously, I only have to bowl one game for the title, so my good game is going to be good enough to win. Sounds confident. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's leading by 11, can increase it to 21 with one more. You know, all these guys are getting more and more good instruction from good quality instructors. And they're all really improving their balance, their follow through. All this creates that kind of an effort. Well, five in a row, Parker Bowen in front by 21 pins. Right now, it's Wednesday night is baseball night in the opening game. It's the Phillies trying to catch the Red Hot Braves at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. And then we're following it up with the Mariners who gave the Indians a lot of trouble taking on the Angels who just keep winning. A little trouble there. Looked like he slipped a little bit, but he got the job done. Well, he's six pin on 19 then through the nose. Does he try and just make a better shot or does he move? Well, I don't know what happened to him there. I don't know if he'll move or not. I, I think uh, being uh, in the situation he's in right now, I doubt if he'll move. I think he'll just try to make a better shot. Uh, something I've noticed about Jason's game in the past is that when he does get to the foul line, he tends to really lurch onto that right foot, his sliding foot, and get up on the toe sometimes. And sometimes when you get up on your toe, uh, it can create a problem balance-wise. Off balance, huh? Yeah. See how he's up on yeah. his toe there? And the six man, boy, you're right, Earl. That, that heel came right off the ground, and he, a lot of guys break with the heel, but he's breaking with the toe. And that's a possibility you lose your balance and slip and maybe even foul when you get in this position. Here's another look at the footwork of Jason, which is good. The footwork is excellent, but watch the foot at the foul line as he comes up on the toe. But he's still in good position there. But he didn't strike when he really needed one right there. That's the lane he's got to finish on, too, Earl. Parker 
Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to make much difference the way Parker Bone is going. He throws a couple more strikes here, and Jason's going to say, uh, the baby needs the new shoes. going to have to wait for a week, I guess. Right. Parker on five in a row, going for six. Parker is ready. He can feel victory. It's been a long time for him. Oh, he sure can. He can smell it right now. Six in a row. What a great reaction from Parker Bone on that shot. Here's the ball going down the lane. Look at the rotation. Now it picks up the roll. Five pin comes over. The head pin's doing most of the damage, but watch Parker Bone. Oh, yeah. A pirouette right there. He's ready for uh, Barishnikov. 1993, over two years, trying to end that drought right now. Oh, he got one up a little high. He knew when he let go that ball was going to be a little problem for him. He feels pretty good about only leaving the six pin, I'm sure. Well, what that does, if I'm adding my score right, if he converts it, it still means if Couch strikes out, he makes Bones show up for the 10th frame. No question, that strike right there would have pretty much put the match away, but he did leave the door open just a crack. And believe me, Jason Couch knows exactly where he stands. He knows he needs four strikes right now. Well, you have to do it one at a time, and the first one is obviously in the ninth frame right now. And as you mentioned, he has to finish on lane 19, which has been the lane he's had the most problems on. Another six pin. First time he missed that lane. Well, I think Parker Bowen's our champion. You can see by the look on his face. He thinks uh, so too, right? He thinks so too, <laughs> and it's a, a very relieved and happy Parker Bowen the third. I'll bet it's a happy Parker Bowen the fourth at home too, huh? Yeah, I would think so. Mary looking on, and uh, sure she's pleased too. You know, you go two years without winning on television, winning a tournament. When you make 11 telecasts, this is the 12th. Well, I guess things uh, do come more, maybe more expensive by the dozen now. Jason finishing out the string in the 10th frame on lane 19. Gave him a little more room, better shot. Just a matter of execution there, huh, Earl? Must have been, Mike. I really am not sure what happened to Jason on that lane. Uh, it didn't seem to, to uh, bothered him, obviously, in the game, the, in the match previous to this one. And Parker Bone didn't struggle that much on lane 19. Parker had one ball go a little high when he left a six pin in the ninth frame, but basically he was just lined up. Uh, I think Jason might have felt a little pressure bowling for the title and that made the difference just notice he came up on that toe again and left another six pin so he, he comes up on it quite a bit but uh, generally the ball is gone sometimes it's not he gets in trouble well Parker is the winner officially right now you know and er, he's had trouble on telecast so we mentioned about this being the 12th one he had a comment on that earlier and this is what he had to say This makes an even dozen. I think it's about time we turn, turn the story around a little bit. We're going to come out here tonight and bowl one great game and win it all. Well, he's not only a great bowler, but a prophet, huh? Well, that's confidence, and I like to see that. When anybody, when they're out there on your own, you've got to do it all yourself in this game. Confidence is one of the major factors, and there's what roommates are all about. Good friends traveling week after week trying to make a living in a very difficult game, professional bowling, and it's always good to have a friend there beside you. Well, you know, we talked about 256 being the magic number tonight. Parker strikes here, which he doesn't, and he would have been in the in the 250s also. He's going to finish with 249 with a spare as Mary from New Jersey looks on. Mary, you'll have the check for you shortly as he misses the 10 pin, but who cares right now? <laughs> Parker Bow, 248. Jason Couch, 218. Parker's the winner of the Columbia 300 Open. Handshakes all around, and uh, of course, a lot of people from Columbia here are saying congratulations to Parker Bone III. Big smile. Well, there's your champion as he's uh, kind of receiving congratulations. We'll be back to talk to this 
champion. This is his 11th victory. We've got some things to cover first and some bills to pay, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Enjoy the wonders of Japan when you enter Kempai. The area's only authentic Japanese restaurant is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Our expert hibachi chefs personally create your meal before your very eyes. A delight for the entire family. Sample the area's only sushi bar. Or enjoy our new traditional Japanese dining room with small private tables or cozy side rooms. Kempai. Experience the magic of Kempai. It's the world's best bacon. From juicy to crisp, perfect for breakfast, a BLT lunch, or a great salad. Bacon Wave stays cool to the touch, yet bacon is crisp and hot. No splatter, no burns. And it's dishwasher safe for fast, easy cleanup. Order Bacon Wave for just $19.95. Now you can bring home the bacon. Order today. To order Bacon Wave, have your credit card ready and call toll free 1 800 767 1300. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 shipping to Bacon Wave. 507 Maple Leaf Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. I guess my motto would be, I kind of let my racket do the talking. When you have two contrasting styles of play, I think that results in some really good tennis. I'm not one to, it's going to start throwing my racket or yelling at umpires. That's not really what I'm about. I guess I'm superstitious to the fact that I'm not superstitious. You know, I like to think I don't have any weaknesses. I'm sure I do have some, but, you know, I think uh, I like where I am right now. The Columbia 300 Open is being brought to you by your local Sherwin-Williams paint and decorating stores. Ask Sherwin-Williams. There's your winner tonight, Parker Bone III. Well, uh, you relieved or what? Elated what? Well, I guess you could say after two years, I got that little monkey off my back. 12 TV shows, and uh, I started my first 10 titles with Columbia as my first title, so hopefully this will start my next 10. Yeah, we were thinking about that. You know, speaking of Columbia, we've got the, the president of Columbia right here right now, Mike Albritton. He's got a nice presentation for you. Parker, congratulations on winning the Columbia 300 Open here in Austin, and I'd like to give you this. Uh, I'm not going to hand it to you, uh, but uh, I'd like to uh, give it to you. And again, congratulate you on your victory here. Thank you very much. Thank you to Columbia. Columbia 300 has been behind the tour for a long, long time, and I hope that you stay with us for many, many more years to come. Thank you. And we're bowling here in beautiful Highland Lanes. We've got the general manager here, John Donovan, and he's got uh, a little piece of paper for you here. Yes. Parker, on behalf of Highland Lanes, Family Sports, the Austin Bowling Community, and the many volunteers who helped make this tournament possible, I want to present you this check for $19,000. Congratulations. John, thank you very much. John Donovan, Highland Lanes. Everyone here, you come out and support us all week. It's been really, really wonderful. I know we're coming back in January, and I, I really cannot wait to look forward to it. Thank you very much. Parker Bone has won this tournament 248 to 218. We'll be back to talk to our newest champion right after these messages. Don't go away. I've stopped playing baseball now, but my son Reed just signed a pro contract. Sometimes we go over his game, and if he asks, I tell him what I know. Like when your muscles get sore, take Advil. Just a couple are strong, fast, and work for me. And Advil's gentle on my stomach. If it'll work on these old muscles, then I know it'll work on mine. Nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. The Bud Light Amateur Beach Challenge. They're lean. They're mean. Oh, they're killing us. Yeah. Two out of three! I got it, I got it, I got it! For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Oh. What's wrong with her? Make it a Bud Light. Welcome back. Um, Earl, you got a question for our newest champion? Well, I have a lot of questions for him, but first of all, I'm kind of curious. What did it feel like to know that Mike Albee got out in that first match? <laughs> I guess you could say that was a big relief right there. As great as he's bowling this year, I, I didn't think he was stoppable. 
But uh, it just goes to show that even the greatest can get beat once in a while, huh? You would know that one. <laughs> well, he didn't make it any easier with the guy that beat him, Brian Goebel, coming up the line. But the, the next question I have for you is a little different line here. The lefties have been doing very well this summer. What do you think the reason for that is? I don't know the exact reason for it. You know, the, the tour lefties that keep coming out, they keep getting better and better. And, and I know when I came out on tour, it seemed like there was a half a dozen or 10 real good lefties. And now it just seems like there's 20 or 30. And when one of us starts bowling good, You'd be surprised, lo and behold, a dozen of us can jump right in there and figure out what we need to do to knock them over. So I just hope it keeps happening that way. <laughs> well, that's been my observation also. I think the left-handers in general have improved their abilities. And of course, the arm swings, if you've got an arm swing like you have or Jason Couch, you can knock them down anywhere. And that's who I was leading up to. Jason Couch, your roommate, what did it feel like to bowl against your roommate? There's a lot of emotion there. <laughs> Bowling against my roommate. Well, I, I told him when we got done, I said, now we're even, one and one. He beat me for the title in the TPC a couple years ago, so we're even. But unfortunately, I think it's my turn to buy dinner since I won this time. Well, nobody oh. has to sleep on the floor, huh? No, not at all. We're going to be uh, talking to Jason Couch right after this, but first we're going to take a look at the number of championship round appearances by different players this year. And we can see that... Mike Albee, Parker Bone, if I can read all this, Brian Goble and Dave D'Entremont are all tied with five. Parker, you, you probably think paint is paint. Well, one place has highly trained people who go to great lengths to answer any question, big or small. Expert color matching from the palest peach to the deepest pine green. And over 2,000 stores, so one's right in your neighborhood. Sherwin-Williams. And you thought it was just a can of paint. Hey, there's only one paint like ours, and only one place to get it. Now, Weather Perfect Flat is just $11.99 a gallon during our cool summer sale. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner Cordless Power Roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over. Because of the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the Power Roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless Power Roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. Welcome back, and joining us is Jason Counts. Jason, uh, you were cruising right along there, and then something happened on 19. Tell us about it. Well, I was uh, making really good shots on the right lane, and I was having a little trouble in the first game. Uh, you probably couldn't tell. I bought a pretty good game score-wise. On the, the left lane, the head started to break down a little bit, and I didn't make the move quick enough against Parker. And, you know, you let him get down the lead, it's over. I mean, he jumps all over you. Well, it wasn't all over a couple of years ago. I understand you guys now are one and one in title matches. Is that right? Yeah, I, you know, I, we have a deal with each other that if uh, one of us wins, we have to, the guy buys dinner. Well, now it's going to be the room. This way. Cover the room, oh, he gets to cover the room. Earl, you got a question? Quick one for him? Well, very quickly, Jason. Uh, he has to pay the room. Nobody has to, he already said nobody has to sleep on the floor, so you're, you're safe there. <laughs> well, it's a good thing because, you know, when I won a couple of years ago against him, I got real tired of getting beat by him. I told him, you know, it's my turn. Well, the next time we do it, it's going to be my turn again. We've got to run right now. Goodbye for Earl Anthony. This is Mike Durbin saying so long from Austin.